today we're going to start our lino block prints and we're going to use a reduction technique. And since it's the year of the rooster, we're going to use a rooster as our subject. You started by coming up with your design in your sketchbook. Now it's time to start printmaking. So you're going to transfer that onto the, a block that looks just like this. It's really easy to carve into and it's going to look like a big stamp when you're done. Okay, so now you have your drawing and we need to transfer it to your lino block. We're going to use some clips and a graphite stick. All you have to do is turn over your paper and color the back. Be sure to color the back. Every year somebody colors the front and then complains that they can't see their drawing. Okay, now you're ready to actually transfer the drawing. You've covered the back with the graphite. Now you're going to use the clips to clip it to your lino block. This is going to help hold it in place when you trace it. Make sure the paper is nice and flat when you do this. Uh, you're going to take a pencil, probably one that's not too sharp so it doesn't cut through the paper, and then you're simply going to trace over the image one more time. Okay, now your image has shown up on your lino block. Isn't that cool? But it is a little bit fuzzy, so I usually take a Sharpie and I go over the lines. You're going to want to make sure they're really clear because when you go to carve them, it's important that you can actually see them. Uh, I would use the Sharpie instead of a zebra pen. For some reason, the Sharpie just works better on the lino block. So get all those details because we're almost ready to start carving. The blades on the lino cut tools come in different shapes and sizes. The tiny V on the left is really great for fine lines and details. But if you have a big open space you need to carve away, the square or the U-shaped blade is probably your better bet. Choosing the right tool is really important and these are decisions you're going to have to make along the way as you get working on your project. Now it's time to start carving. Hold the block in place with one hand up against the edge of a bench hook. That will keep it from moving. Never carve towards your hand. These blades are sharp and it's important that you work safely. As I'm carving the background, you might have noticed that I keep turning the block. That's so that I don't carve towards my hand. Remember, these tools are sharp. Oh, and you know this is time lapse, right? And there's no way you're carving this quickly. And if you are, you need to stop and slow down. I don't want to run out of band-aids with this project. A great way to get kind of a hint about what your project's going to look like is to take a piece of paper and a crayon and do a crayon rubbing over top of your printing block. This will let you see what the image is going to look like, sort of. Right now it lets me see that there's all kinds of lines in the background that I don't want in my project. So that means I'm going to have to go back and carve away some of those lines again. Okay, so I just carve away those lines that were showing up in the crayon rubbing, and I think that'll do it. Okay, we're almost ready to print. All we need now is our ink and a brayer. You always want to start with the lightest color first, and you want to roll the ink until it's evenly distributed across the whole brayer. And then, here comes the part that I think is the most fun. Okay, now you're going to take your brayer and roll the ink across your printing block. Be sure to get all the corners and the edges. You want to make sure the ink is distributed evenly. Okay, now that we've got the ink on our printing block, we are going to make a print. So gently place it on your paper. Once you've done that, you're going to take a pencil and mark the corners. This way when we go to print the other colors on top, you'll be able to see where to line the block up so that you've got a nice clear print with the three different colors. All right. Here it is, our first print. Now if you've got those black lines, don't worry about it. It's the ink from the Sharpie. You won't see it in the final product. Now I'm going to actually ink up the block again because we're going to document all the different steps that we took to make our three colored reduction print. So I'm just going to print it next to this one. I don't need to put the pencil marks on because we're not going to print anything on top of this one. It's just to show the steps that we went through. Okay, now we have to carve again. This time we're carving away everything that we want to stay the first color, in this case, yellow. So I'm gonna start by carving away the beak. This is a step you really have to think about before you start. You might actually wanna color the pieces that you're gonna carve away. Now I'm carving a feather design into my rooster. 
It's the details that are going to make your projects stand out and be amazing. Now it's time to add the red ink. Once you get the ink onto the printing block, you can see all those white lines. That's what I carved away. That's going to stay yellow on your print. Okay, now for the moment of truth. I have to line this block up with those pencil lines I drew earlier. It's a little tricky. Be patient. Get somebody to help you if you need it. But once it's on there, gently press it down and then give it a roll with the brayer. And maybe cross your fingers. Okay, now that we've printed the red, it's time for the grand finale. I need to carve away everything that I want to stay red. Be really careful. It's easy to get carried away and then have nothing left on your printing block. All right, here we go. Think carefully before you do this. Okay, here we go. The last time we're putting ink on our printing block. Again, you need to make sure it's nice and even, get all the corners, get all the edges. Then we have to line it up again with those pencil marks that we put down when we made the original yellow print. So carefully line it up. Hope it works. This part makes me nervous, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. So here they are, our first yellow print, then the red one, then the black one. When you put them all together, you end up with one very colorful print. And there it is, your reduction print. It's called a reduction print because each step of the way, you reduce the surface of your printing block by carving it away. The results can be spectacular. I can't wait to see what you're going to make. <laughs>